Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Kajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic website worldwide. Today, I hope to discuss a little bit more about my testimony and story. What a wonderful time to be alive. Eagles get excited for the storm, folks. It's time to awaken Ezekiel's bones and get after it. Well, my good friends, I welcome you all to the latest episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. Once again, I thank you all for continuing to support this apostolate, this website, as we head into 2017, a very pivotal year. So much going on in the world today, yet so many ears closed in. We do not want to listen to truth. So many eyes that are covered with the cataracts and who simply do not want to see the times in which we live. And so we have to continue to pray, folks. At a last second cancellation here. And so I wanted to take time out today to be able to relay, relay a little bit more about uh, my story, my testimony, I don't believe over the course of the three years with Trad Cat Night, I've done any real at length piece uh, on myself, where you know where I was coming from, and as we continue to grow, uh, this question keeps popping up. You know, who are you? And I think what I'm going to do is add a formal link to a biography, I guess as some other websites do. Again, it's not about Eric, uh, but I guess to help people understand why I do the things that I do, you know, where I'm coming from, you know, who was instrumental, I guess, in my conversion, in my learning, and arriving uh, to the true faith in this modernist crisis. Um, it helps people to get an understanding for me as they're hearing, uh, you know, me speak on other radio shows and YouTube channels, my own radio show, putting out my own articles. And so for the next uh, hour or so, if not shorter, we'll get into that a little bit. In terms of formal degrees, I have a business degree, BS in business, master's degree in business. I founded, as some of you know, Defeat Modernism, which was originally called Defeat the Heresies of Religious Liberty and Liberty of Conscience. Uh, ultimately left uh, that website. Not sure what's going on with it, so I hold no formal affiliation uh, with Defeat Modernism any longer. But it was, at one point, an initiative of mine. We now are with Trad Cat Night. We just passed three years. I was sitting about, sitting back, thinking about this today, and uh, it truly has whizzed by, folks. Uh, you know, referring back to Scripture, just realizing just how fast life goes, and so salvation must be always before our eyes, and that's why I take what I do so seriously, uh, so much to the point where. You know, I have to tone it back a lot because I'm putting in too many hours and my health uh, often is reflected uh, in this, if you will. For those who don't know, I'm also currently writing an interior book entitled Fortress of the Soul, Ascension to the King's Throne Room. Uh, be somewhat similar to the interior castle. St. Catherine's Dialogues, St. Francis even, 
It's more of his poetry. St. Augustine's Confessions. It's more of an interior guide. There have been many to ask you know, whether this is going to be some sort of uh, theological piece to you know, unmask Vatican II. And yeah, I mean, we cover that extensively, but there are so many books who have already done that. This is, first and foremost, an interior work piece, if you will, trying to help people move through the purification process into the illuminative phase, ultimately oneness with Christ, where two wills become one in the spiritual marriage. And I hope to relay that not only with you know, certain parables that are written, poetry that is written, uh, but just practical pieces to help you further yourself, if you will. Because we have to remember, when wherever we leave off here in this life is where we pick up uh, in the next. Poor Protestants who, it seems like every Protestant believes that you know their loved one is in heaven and that the vast majority are going to heaven. This This is not Catholic teaching. This was never a common opinion of the church. And so we have to do our best daily to stay united to Christ, to be as prayerful as we can. Prayer is numero uno. We have to continue to go out there and demonstrate our faith. Love works. To put it simply, love works. We have to get out there and do works of mercy. Make sure you subscribe to Trad Cat Night right now. Make sure you click that notification button. YouTube is throwing all sorts of uh, different angles at us, if you will. And now apparently, outside of unsubscribing some people, they are now uh, not sending videos to people's emails after I'm completed with them. So make sure you click that little bell next to the subscription button. Make sure you tell your friends family, church members, uh, about Trad Cat Night. Again, we're the number one ranked traditional Catholic website, a top 20,000 website. We continue to grow. I hope all of the information that we present here at Trad Cat Night is uh, not only pertinent, but it really drives home all of the things that we are seeing now currently in the world. And, uh, you know, at one point I thought I had all this useless information and now I'm able to use it. Uh, whether, you know, we're talking about Planet X, whether we're talking about secret societies, where we're talking about the areas of health which re relate to the global depopulation uh, program, whether it's just what the early church fathers taught on these end times, eschatology, you know, the apocalypse, and... Uh, I hope you all do appreciate it, and I, I do see a good number of you who have emailed me recently who have begun their awakening process, and that's what it's all about. This is a process, folks. You're not going to listen to what I have to say after one week or even one week's worth of blogs and ultimately arrive at the conclusion that Vatican II wasn't ca uh, Catholic. It doesn't happen like that. It's not natural. And so we've got to continue to pray the rosary. We have to continue to stay close to Our Lady uh, and to continue to ask for direction. That's ultimately what it is. Silence and solitude is necessary. If you're one of those types who think you're going to arrive at the conclusion that we have very definitively and think by putting in you know, 15 minutes a day you're going to do this, it's not going to happen. So that's why I always say, at the very least, put in 15 minutes a day here at Trad Cat Night. So much going on in the world. Lots to cover. Um, but in relation to me and my story, and again, you know, don't want to make this too awkward, but I wanted to get this into audio format, if you will, a little bit more about myself. You know, I'm originally from Tom's River, New Jersey, grew up on the Jersey Shore. Uh, you know, quite an interesting area, if you will. I haven't been back in, wow, well over... A decade now so I know it's it's changed somewhat and uh, you know I always grew up close to God uh, I certainly at an early age growing up in the Novus Ordo it's, it's not as if 
you know, theology was crammed down my throat or, you know, studying the catechism every Sunday. But I had a very, you know, intense relationship with God at a very early age, uh, you know, dealing with some, uh, you know, mental struggles, if you will, even emotional struggles, even as, uh, you know, in my early life, I guess you could say. And so, you know, based upon that, I knew what was right and wrong. Uh, obviously, I didn't know that the Novus Ordo was wrong at that point. Um, but that's that was a, a foundation for me, that I knew I could rely upon uh, God. I knew that prayer was very important. I even knew the value of silence and solitude, even as, uh, and, you know, in my early years, uh, when maybe things might go wrong at school. You know, I wasn't one to, you know, want to be necessarily around everyone, get up in my room, kind of be by myself. And that's uh, how it's kind of relayed into uh, my adult life. As the trials and tribulations came, I knew that I wasn't going to find consolation on the surface level talking to friends and family. Yes, for a while, I'm not saying it's wrong. Uh you know, it, it can be beneficial. I'm not saying not to have a support system, but ultimately God through your cross is trying to drive him to you. Uh, and, and you to him, vice versa. So that's why we have to stay fastened to our cross. And I've, I've said this and written about this in my book. I never heard his voice more louder than when I was most suffering. And so... You know, ultimately in the spiritual life, we're breaking down the self, we're breaking down, uh, you know, our shortcomings and failures, breaking down those venial sins, removing the smudges of self, if you will, off of our wedding dress, uh, to put it in uh, mystical format, if you will. And we have to remember, God is holy, brighter than 10,000 suns. And so if we expect to see him face to face, we have to be perfect. Go ye therefore and be perfect. So those who cannot put down things in this modern world, whose hearts are weighed down with this thing, with that thing, with sports teams, with the video games, with the latest gadgets and gadgets, and even people are an impediment to God. You see... We must keep our houses spotless. We must, like a good housewife, interiorly clean out and dust so that the king is free to enter into our own fortress, if you will, our own house. And we must remember also that we have not reserved a place for Christ on the second floor away in the back, a little closet space, if you will. The whole house is his. And so some of you will invite Christ into the home, but say, eh, we'll relegate him to the closet space upstairs on the second floor in the bedroom. No, folks, the whole house is his. So what I mean by this is you got to hand over your entire will to Christ if you are to be truly free and that's one of the things i say always is to be an eagle we have to be detached folks we have to be detached so in order to do this we truly have to take time out daily and so getting back to my story a little bit growing up i guess you could say uh, upon my teenage years if you will uh, maybe approaching age 20, because I took a two two years off after high school uh, to kind of figure out things, sort things out. I, I kind of had a midlife crisis, if you will, at age you know 18, 19, 20, or roundabouts. I, I truly had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was working at a hospital at one point, working in a dietary department. I had gotten that job uh, from my mother, who was a nurse. And, uh, you know, and I took a shot and a gamble when I do, one of my brothers was going to be moving 
out to Ohio to go to Franciscan to study anthropology. And I, you know, I took the gamble and I said, hey, let's do it for a semester. Let's see what happens. And so some of you know, at, at least by this point, uh, you know, I was very into athletics. Basketball was quite good. Uh, you know, at one point I used to play, uh, you know, pickup games uh, on the Jersey Shore. Played with a lot of great players who played in college, some even professionally. You know, played in some leagues even. And uh, that's always been a pretty important part of my life. And I feel that I learned a lot in athletics, maybe even more so than obtaining uh, a formal business degree or multiple uh, business degrees and to putting a team together, getting everyone on the same page. And so I kind of utilize that here with, with Trad Cat Knight. You know, our Lord is asking me to lead this particular apostolate, but it's about bringing everyone together and just providing the, le the leadership. And you know how difficult it is uh, in this time with so many opinions to try to get everyone on the same page. And I obviously learned that tremendously uh, during my business career, which was more uh, shortened, if you will, uh, being in charge of, of so many people with so many different personalities. And it's kind of parlayed and, and, and run over into what I'm now currently doing. So I now can understand why our Lord allowed me to, you know, get business degrees and even the athletic aspect. I mean, it's all kind of coming together and culminating to what I do today. And so uh, stepping back here, uh, briefly, you know, I kind of fell into evangelical fundamentalism, if you will, at that point. You know, again, it wasn't very theologically strong. You know, I didn't understand, you know, the, really the differences between Catholicism and Protestantism. I mean, I was still going to Mass and doing this or that, but I, uh, I, I just didn't know, you know, at that point. It's not like I didn't want to know. Um, I guess everything was just so loosey goosey in the world at that point that it wasn't, uh, made important to me, I guess you could say. And so as many of you know, I, I went to Franciscan university, uh, truly not knowing, uh, the, you know, taking a Nova Sordo for really what it was worth. And I guess you could argue that it was good in that sense because I was on the inside. I could see how things were. And, uh, you know, as I began to put in more time over time, it became quite clear that this was just Protestantism. This wasn't Catholicism from what the saints had learned and taught and passed down. Even the new mass, and as many of you know, you know, Franciscan University is highly charismatic. I mean, th <laughs> this is not a Catholic mass, uh, you know, across the board. And so, you know, I began to scratch my head a little bit and began to pick up where I had left off, I guess you could say. I'd always kind of studied, was a little bit weird in the sense that I always would study things that maybe uh, most people didn't want to study, whether it was end times, you know, secret societies, just overall, just kind of investigating, you know, looking into the whole alien UFO thing, which now many of you know I try to expose, uh, you know, getting into the, the, the world of the demonic uh, to expose it, you know, the new age. And uh, I can see now what, where it's all tied in. And so I know that's one of the things that I present that's far different than any of your other uh, quote-unquote traditionalist website is. And not that what they're doing is wrong on this level, but they'll just basically provide you news for the day. You know, Cardinal Burke did this, did that. And yeah, that's, that's all great. Uh, from my perspective, until they repent and convert, I don't feel the, the need to, you know, <clears throat> say where he's going or, or, or doing that, you know, I'm trying to analyze more. I'm trying to piece everything together for you a little bit better. So a very vibrant picture is portrayed in your own mind that yes, we are living in the times of the universal apostasy, wherein we have this antichrist figure about to show up onto the scene. And, uh, that's where a lot of these, these websites you know, not only they go wrong, but they don't have uh, that study and that background to where they can <coughs> piece this all together. And maybe perhaps they, they feel that <coughs> they might be labeled conspiratorial types. And, and you all know I could care less what anyone has to say about me. 
Uh, the bottom line is what we're doing is highly fruitful and highly successful. Again, being the number one ranked traditional Catholic website in terms of opinion, I have a lot of priests, and, you know, priests even who will come to me uh, for my own opinion in certain areas, and it's very humbling to know. And so uh, I ask you all to keep, continue to keep me in prayer. Now, getting back to <coughs> Franciscan University, and outside of the, I, I recall one story even when, when I was kind of digging into all this stuff, and I remember asking uh, one of the priests, you know, it was really nice. I mean, to me, he seemed very ignorant what was going on. But I was just beginning to understand, like, hey, there's something really wrong in the church. I remember, you know, asking about that and then maybe, you know, trying to pick his brain a little bit with, with, with more of, you know, the apocalypse and, and things like that. And he kind of just brushed it away. You know, don't need to be focused in on that. You know, just concentrate. Uh, how, how do I put this? You know, he, he brushed aside those two subjects and was just like, you know, just, just focus on the day, basically, which to a certain extent is true. I mean, we should just be focusing in on our interior life. But it was almost like he didn't have an answer. He knew he didn't have an answer. And so, you know, I had to continue to keep investigating and looking into and putting the time in. And for those of you out here, again, who think you're going to arrive at the position that I have, you know, taken and, and people like Father Hess and Archbishop Levev, you know, again, 15 minutes a day simply isn't going to cut it. So, you know, at Franciscan University, I guess you could say I was one of the more uh, popular people, you know, being the athlete uh, on campus, if you will. Um, you know, I hesitate to say kind of playboy type, but, uh, you know, the times that I did go out, you know, obviously you're in with the cool crowd and this or that. And, you know, the only reason why I, I kind of relay that in my own story and in my book is to kind of demonstrate and to show uh, how I truly was ruled by self, the kind of disease of me, uh, and how, you know, how dangerous draw trying to draw, you know, attention to yourself, you know, what that can bring ultimately. And so that's a heavy uh, prevalent theme in my book. But nevertheless, I mean, I guess you could argue it had some uh, benefits getting to know a lot of people, of course, not only priests, but just people in the school and just uh, people around me. Uh, didn't date much. Uh, you know, I had, had a few girlfriends. Uh, and I would, you know, would always ask at that point, you know, and kind of going through like another crisis, maybe by age 24, you know, you started to see some of your friends who were in longer term relationships and you start panicking in your early 20s. You're like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I should be married and this or that. I should be beginning to think about my career and that. And it was kind of like, not like that, uh, with me only to find out, of course, you know, this whole notion that would, would run through me interior that, that I need a woman in my life, uh, truly would be answered, uh, down the road when of course I met our lady and I first picked up that rosary and wore the scapular I'm more on that in a little bit, but you know, that kind of prayer, I guess you could say, or that, um, that kind of running through over my soul, you know, it was, it was answered that all I truly needed, uh, was our lady. And that even scripture says, you know, we can't trust man. And I truly, at a certain point, didn't trust women. And we'll get into that here in a little bit because it's essential to my own story. Um, so, you know, having led, uh, I moved to Chicago, uh, you know, was on the retail side of things. Again, pretty successful for my age, uh, I guess you could say. Eventually moved back to Francisca, got my master's degree in business, uh, <clears throat> ultimately dated uh, one girl from a, a neighboring Catholic college here in the Ohio Valley. And, uh, you know, as the story goes, I mean, she kind of packed up and left one day without, you know, even really telling me that she was going to leave. And that was after about a, a year or so or dating. And uh, I decided, hey, let me leave the Ohio Valley. Let me take a gamble here. And, uh, you know, at that point I was still, you know, pursuing her. I, th I thought there was enough there. And, uh, long story short between her and uh, a previous girlfriend, a girlfriend of mine who I deemed as, uh, you know, a best friend type. And that was c kind of key to my story because I, I, I thought 
that after seeing these two particular girls do the things that they were doing behind my back, as I'm sure many can relay, you know, being disappointed and being cheated upon and girls not doing things that they should be doing, whether you're a girl or a guy for that matter, it works both ways. Uh, I just, I just knew and understood. It's like, wow, can you, can you really trust anybody, uh, you know, in this life? So my heart really went south after this second failed uh, relationship, I guess you could say, you know, putting in a lot of time and effort, more so than what these girls uh, were putting in. And uh, this is this is where I became very evil uh, at this point where I really just shut down and I started to control and manipulate young ladies, uh, you know, using them for sexual purposes, uh, got addicted to pornography and sex, you know, was out in the, in the clubs at that point, because at, at that point, you know, I was making really good money i had a really good position uh so i, I kind of had it all to a certain degree you could say you know i had the american dream or the american life and all that you know nice big home single guy bachelor you know athlete uh you know i would i would say that most girls thought i was pretty attractive and i kind of do that at that time so i would use it to my advantage uh you know again just the just going out and, and partying and, and, and drinking. And I uh, really turned off God, you know, obviously, at this point. That, that should be very apparent to everyone. Letting money lead me wherever it would. Uh, career first. And that was it. I shut down. And I became like a, you know, I was like a trance-like trance -like state. Kind of like a zombie I mean, you don't you don't realize that you're locked in. You don't realize that you're picking up all these unclean spirits. You don't realize how absorbed into self that you are. And uh, I just kind of recall more towards the end uh, in dating this one girl. Not that I really had serious feelings for her, but at that point, God was starting to break me down health wise, and that was another key thing. I mean, God had put me on my back, but on death's door a few times. Uh, one of which was uh, this just really intense seizure. I mean, that was the first one I had ever had. Uh, and I just remember flopping around like a fish in the back of the ambulance, you know, looking at the blood pressure thing. It was like whatever it was, 270 over like 220 or something. I, I really thought I was going to die. I mean, I lost all um, mobility in my extremities. And uh, it's qu quite frightening. You know, family came down, luckily for family. And again, this is where I'm not saying you shouldn't have support throughout your own trials. You, you certainly do need support. And that's why I try to lend uh, my ear to you all as best I can with as busy as I can just to listen. I think that's a great works of mercy. You can write that down. Just sit and listen to somebody because you never know who you can impact on the other side just by sitting there and listening to someone's story, just by interacting, just by smiling. You don't know how you may indeed uh, be saving someone's life without realizing it. And so continue to obey interiorly the Holy Ghost and, and follow his lead, uh, as I have done in my own ministry. I know I've shared with you some stories of where the Holy Ghost basically commanded me to do certain things, uh, you know, do A, do B, do C, you know, only to find out that uh, in my ministry work, the girl on the other end was about to blow her head off. You know, I didn't know that going into what uh, I knew I was being led into. Uh, but it's very, very important to make sure you obey his voice interiorly. So, uh, I guess you could say, uh, again, getting back to the, the story here a little bit. You know, my heart went south. You know, it went dark. It just totally eclipsed of the heart as that one song goes. And uh, I was just getting into anything and everything that I, I shouldn't have, uh, then God started breaking me down health-wise, um, to, literally to the point where I, I really couldn't do anything. I was, I was on my backside uh, most of the time, trying to re recuperate, recover. And this is where I really began to really turn and change, where I started getting back to study, but studying uh, you know the faith, uh, getting into encyclicals, uh, researching more, uh, about the writings of like Archbishop Lefebvre and Father has. So, I mean, when you're on your back most of the day, you have opportunity to do that. And so I was still kind of struggling at a certain point, not knowing if I was called back to the world. Uh, it would only be some years after that I realized, okay, you know, God doesn't, 
who wants me to transition out of the world to do this work for you. And so I kind of follow the, the model of St. Francis, if you will, uh, who I felt had a very similar story to mine, kind of young playboy type, was was pretty well off. Uh, you know, I guess you could kind of say, label him as a, a womanizer and a partier. But, you know, he went through an awful dark night and then basically it embraced, uh, you know, poverty and just embraced a completely, I mean, he embraced the, the gospel of our Lord. And so I wanted to kind of emulate that as best I could, but it was obviously more in an urban uh, area. I was taken back by some family members, uh, if you will, who have been gracious enough over the years to provide for the just the basic necessities. So, you know, everything that I essentially have today, um, you know, I do do work at certain points throughout the year to make a little bit of income, you know, whether it's cutting grasses or doing some, you know, some blue collar work to make a little extra money. But everything that's truly been given to me has come either by through you you know, via donations or through, you know, family members, you know, the basics, whether it's shoes, clothes, and I, I pretty much gave away everything. Obviously, I don't have a house at this point. I gave away a car, uh, clothes I could really, you know, care less about. And so I really wanted to embrace that, uh, you know, kind of seeing how those early apostles uh, lived, obviously very detached from worldly things. And that's one of the aspects to be in an eagle is to be very detached, especially for the times ahead, the economic collapse coming, and we know everything which is about to transpire. You know, now is the time to really start hunkering down and taking your interior life very seriously, as I've been saying, because if you're behind the eight ball a little bit, um, not saying that you can't make it through, but it's going to be a little bit more uh, difficult uh, if, you're, if you're not starting right now. Um... So, you know, I felt as though I was kind of like in this zombie-like state that needed to, you know, I needed to break. And uh, as you're kind of loosening yourself from mortal sin, you know, where certain habits might be quite frequent and daily, you know, they start stretching out. Maybe you, you trip and you fall, you know, once a week. Uh, then it'd be like once every two weeks. Uh, and it would become more and more painful. You see, when I was doing stuff way back when... I mean, I could do anything, uh, especially on the sexual level, and not think twice about it. I mean, that's just what kind of a, a monster I was. That's how blinded you are. Reason is blinded. Everything is just darkened. Your heart is darkened. Uh, your intellect is darkened. And, uh, you know, as you start to get more intimate uh, with someone or something, someone in this case being, you know, Christ and, and Our Lady, every time you would offend, it would, it would hurt more. I mean, I would start to feel the literal pains, the interior pains of that. And so we know that mortal sin is very violent. And, you know, I, I just, I can recall literally the last time committing mortal sin, you could call it a, a gift of God, but just, just the violence uh, behind that. Uh, it's still, I mean, it's so distant from, from many, many, many years ago, but it's still just so on my soul it's still still vivid and I recall you know not sleeping for you know two or three days I, re I recall uh you know the Novus Ordo priest at that time uh you know having have to put up with me I mean because he saw me on practically uh, a daily basis as I was kind of looking for direction and trying to you know get things right so to speak you know how do I do you know how do I do this how do I do that uh and uh I just remember all the trauma that I you know had put him through with just him having to have to deal with me because it, it was brutal, you know, especially uh, emotionally. Uh, so, you know, that struggle ultimately was, was one, one day when I was really struggling. This is to back up a little bit. And I knew that I obviously wasn't going to conquer this thing 100%, you know, in terms of the vices across the board, but specifically with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, the sexual sin the sins of impurity, which become so prevalent now in my ministry, trying to wake up those souls who are basically who I was. Uh, and we know from Fatima that most souls go to hell due to uh, impurity. And so this is why I spend a good portion of my apostle doing what I do uh, and trying to be as compassionate as I can because, you know, I've been there, done that with that in that particular sense. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, I just remember reaching out one day and kind of as a last resort like there's there's just no way you know i can conquer this thing on, on the natural level and so 
I remember it was just sitting out on the table. Actually, both of them. Uh, you know, around a statue, I picked up a, a rosary and a scapular. Wore it on my neck, and I have not, uh, you know, taken it, taken it off. Um, I still hold, uh, you know, still hold to it that the rosary is the weapon. The scapular is, is my armor. It certainly has helped with, uh, you know, times of temptation. It has helped me through uh, those moments of, you know, doubt and despair. And as you're progressing along in the interior life, you're going to, you know, you're going to find it more difficult. I think many people think like, okay, as I'm progressing with God, this this is going to get a whole lot easier. On a certain level, it is because you're now absorbing more of the fire of light, fire and light, as I say. God is an all-consuming fire and an uncomprehensible light. So you're you're expanding more in selfless love, but it is becoming uh, more difficult in the sense that you are you know you're distancing yourself. Uh, from self and there are greater trials and temptations to come and I guess I kind of liken it to if you were dating someone pretty intensely maybe for like five years and you know obviously you really know each other pretty pretty intimate uh, not in a physical sense but you know an emotional sense uh, and just you know interacting with them daily and it's kind of like you know your girlfriend leaving you in a <clears throat> in a room full of like you know, 20 really attractive other girls who are all trying to, to V for your attention. And that's what God will do. Don't think that God won't allow to do that because he, he wants to test you. He wants to see how much you, you truly love him and to distance yourself from the world. So in all our decisions that we, you know, make daily, we have to, as I say, you know, it's either the sacred heart or self in all of our actions. And if we're consistently choosing the sacred heart, you're going to find that you're you're growing in grace, that you're growing in virtue, uh, you're growing in what I call selfless love, and ultimately that's what He wants. You know, to the degree that you allow God to work in your soul, um, is the degree ultimately that you're you know you're freeing yourself uh, from self and ultimately gaining true liberty. So it became more difficult in one sense but I was becoming more free interiorly. And so as I was getting uh, reaccustomed to this, I guess you can say, you know, looking back on my early childhood, as I said, being very close to God, I just knew and I just put the pedal to the metal and I said, okay, th this is my life's work. And this is truly all our life's work is the point that I'm making here. No matter what you are, whether you're a husband, a wife, businessman, this or that, your, your ultimate aim, folks, is to get as close to God as possible before your death. That's it. None of that's going to matter in the end. You know, how much money you made, you know, what kind of cars you had, you know, what kind of friends you had, whether they were celebrities or not, you know, how popular you were. And, you know, and as, as large as we are now, I, I argue that we're not very popular. I'm actually pretty hated across the board, even in the traditionalist world. I mean, I could care less. Uh, you know, the bottom line is, is people know, they understand this work, they respect it. Uh, they may not agree with everything I have to say, but the bottom line is the things that we have to say are not necessarily popular, especially to a world dominated by the Novus Ordo, dominated by Protestantism and Zionism. And then, of course, you just know all the, the fighting going on in the traditionalist world that I, at this point, you know, it just gets old after a while. And I've kind of just put it behind me. People who want to leave, for whatever reason, they think I'm a fake, they think I'm a pornographer, whatever they want to, they can just move along. I don't stand before them at the end of the day, and quite frankly... Many of them just have bruised egos, and they're just looking for um, looking for some sort of relevance uh, in this hour. Perhaps they've run out of material for themselves. Uh, but the bottom line is, folks, when I go on radio shows, that's one of the things that I try to stress is that Mary was instrumental uh, in my conversion. So I, I found that woman that so many people, even in their early 20s, are, are asking, you know, I need a woman in my life. Well, yeah. All you need truly uh, is Mary. If if God grants you later, you know, some sort of earthly relationship, then pick up with it and go, you know, go with it. And, uh, you know, I, I give this uh, in terms of direction and advice, not only for the, the females, uh, but even for the men. I've had a few more conversations even this week. You know, there are many who are just, they don't know. 
you know, they feel like they're called to, to being married, but they're wondering why God hasn't allowed it to happen yet. And so we, we've got to remember each and every day, align our wills with his will, and we won't be emotional over it. Whatever he wants, God gets. He should get, right? He created us. And so let's keep in mind who is uh, steering the ship, who's the captain of the boat, who is the passenger, and who is driving the car. Um, so, you know, just, uh, you know, another point that I, I just wanted to make here is I'm, I'm looking at some of my notes here and I just wanted to stress this here in this particular radio show is, you know, so many are moving in the wrong direction in terms of we see everything that is crashing kind of a down around us. You know, we see how Looney Tunes Francis is and how, most of the, 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 the priests and, and prelates are just completely faithless. They're not keeping the true faith. You know, now is the time truly to get excited. You know, in the business world, we always called it areas of opportunity. You know, now is the time to shine in that sense, to let, you know, grace, to let the Holy Ghost work through you. Um, we don't even need a whole lot of people to accomplish that. I forget what Saint said it, but he said, you know, give me 10, you know, 10 people uh, doing uh, doing something, and I can basically you know, evangelize the whole world. It's not the famous quote about the rosary that I think some of you might be thinking of. It's, it's actually another quote, and I don't have it in front of me. But the bottom line is, you know, God can take, you know, a handful of people and basically reconvert the world. You know, ten, ten saints, if you will. You know, you know, saint, ten St. Francis's of our times, and it's lights out for the devil. So he doesn't really even need a whole lot of people in terms of leadership to get things moving in the right direction. So, you know, don't become, don't fall into that den of despair and doubt i was on a radio show uh in new orleans yesterday one of the callers who called in said you know he left the catholic church because of the pedophilia crisis and i said well why that's not a, you know that's not a reason i mean i can go to any one of these heretical denominational uh protestant churches and find worse sins there i mean you obviously shouldn't be in one of those churches but the bottom line is you don't leave the faith the church that christ established on the basis of that uh now heresy is a different story we know from Catholic teaching, we can't be in buildings uh, teaching heresy and, te and not teaching Catholic things, not teaching Catholicism. That's the reason why you, you need not be in those mainstream churches uh, following Vatican II. Hopefully you all have gotten a chance to check out my blog today, Is My Church Traditional? And I try to keep it more in layman's terms to give you some practical advice. But I'm just running into an awful lot of people who think that their church is traditional. And after five minutes of just asking some questions, they know truly deep down that their church is not traditional. It's just a way for them to rationalize getting to Mass every Sunday. And they're still full of self-love, unfortunately. And they're not able to take that leap off of the cliff and say, listen, I'm going to take a stand. You know, I'm going to please Jesus here. Remember... It's all about pleasing Jesus. You, you'll still get grace through the church itself, through the Blessed Virgin Mary. And if you think it's bad now, folks, it's, it's going to get worse. But again, get excited for these times. Christ will always give you uh, the grace necessary. He's always, you know, three steps ahead of you. I mean, goodness. I mean, he knew this day was going to come. You, you don't think he's going to supply the grace necessary for us to save our souls, whether the priests... And the popes have have lost their mind regardless. You see? So God is not bound by sacraments. We know through uh, through church teaching. So don't get overly excited and overly worried uh, in that sense. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had uh, mentioned that over this talk. You know, always remember to ask God where to put your next foot forward. Especially in your major decisions i have a lot of people now coming to me you know should i move here should i do this or that i can't answer that for you folks i mean you got to hunker down in prayer and uh if you're staying close to our lady she will light that path it will be so clear to your mind as to what path to take that you will take it and you ought to take it but don't get overly excited if you don't get an answer back uh immediately you know god still has to put things into motion, touch people's hearts, uh, get the right relationships in order, things along that line. Uh, so we have to start seeing things as he sees them. We start seeing things as we 
want God to see things, then we're going to be in an awful lot of trouble because then we're we're commanding God to obey our will. And that, you know, I know God knows the desires of our hearts. He He wants to give it to us, but ultimately, He knows the path for your salvation. He knows if by taking one road, it will ultimately lead you down the wrong path. He's not going to allow you to walk down that path. So don't cry about it. Don't vet about it. Don't get angry over God. Don't leave the Catholic Church because of it. Again, that's due to self-love. All those types of responses. It's self-love. And that is our ultimate aims. That's the ultimate aims of the book. Obviously, it's conversion of souls. It's to touch hearts. It's to help people understand that we have to be loosened completely. Self has to die. Just like uh, Christ uh, died who was our selfless model on the cross. That's how we have to become. Christ left it all on the table. You know, there's an expression in the athletic world, you know, leave it all out on the field. We just had uh, a game yesterday. Um, I, I watch football games uh, from time to time. I'll still watch them uh, this weekend. Uh, and it's always kind of good to see, you know, some of these young men and how they respond to adversity and th this or that and to see how some teams, you know, teach and preach. Because I, I would use some of the same tactics you know, being an ex-businessman myself, being in the athletic world, I think there's a lot of commonality to just leadership in general and what they're doing. But nevertheless, really good game yesterday. Clemson uh, had beat, uh, what was uh, uh, Alabama yesterday. And you'll notice just a lot of adversity in this game. You know, you might get knocked down today. You might trip up in mortal sin, but you have to want it. At the end of the day, it's about wanting it. You know, these really good athletes, Michael Jordan didn't arise to be the greatest basketball player ever because he sat on the couch eating, you know, Cheetos and playing video games. He wanted it. So you have to do the, ne the things necessary to become the best. Now, if we're truly trying to become the saints, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, to use this as an analogy, we got to do the things that we know that we have to do to become saints. And, and Christ really left it down when he said, deny thyself, take up thy cross, Come follow me. That's in a nutshell on a daily basis. Now, of course, we have to sprinkle in the, the reality that we have to know our faith. We have to go out there and do works of mercy. Uh, and for those of you who are really suffering right now in the purification period, perhaps there's some of you who are, this word might, might drive home, you know, to stop the cycle of constantly thinking about yourself because that's the ultimate aim. You know, of course, we have to self-examine to root out vices. But if you find yourself constantly thinking about yourself uh, on a daily basis, th this isn't good. Where your heart is, there also is your treasure. Start thinking about God. Replace it with God. Replace it with going out and helping others. Trying to make an impact, if you will, on this world. This is this is what we're, we're, we're truly called to do. I mean, that's what Christ did. He left it all out on the field, so to speak. Left it all. And that's what we have to do uh, if we're going to use uh, that analogy from the athletic world. You know, we have these gifts, uh, and in Scripture we know we can't hide these gifts. We have to go out and try to help others with it. You know, for me, you know, maybe that poem that, you know, that I write might really drive home with a handful of you who are you may, maybe going through a certain trial. And so, you know, however we can help, that's what we need to be doing whether we're going into chastisements or not this is how we should have been living and it's unfortunate that god has to send chastisements for us to uh how do how should i say is to actually do what we're supposed to be doing uh all along and that's kind of like what a good coach does if, if you think about it you know what, what do they do when, when a team is really struggling do they get all novel uh, and start, you know, whipping up all these wild offenses and even No, they go back to the basics and they start doing that better. They start perfecting it better. They start perfecting their techniques. You know, do your jobs. Do your jobs as, uh, you know, the, the Patriots head coach. That's what we have to do. We have to do our job. Our job is to become a saint. Our job is to serve Jesus. So we got to do those things which are necessary. Are you getting to the sacraments as best as you can? Are you spending an hour in silence and solitude on a daily basis? Are you reading the imitation of, of Christ, the imitation of the sacred heart, the spiritual combat on a daily basis? Uh, you know, trying to get a better uh, handle on the interior life. Are you reading the saint writings? Are you reading the pre-Vatican II encyclicals? Are you arming yourselves uh, in the faith? I assure you won't be an eagle without doing that. Education is a very key part to what not only I am about, but just in general what we will be about uh as an order one day 
I have no question about that uh, at a certain point in time when we, when we cross that path. But the bottom line is, you, you know, you better know the faith. Can't go out there and evangelize if you don't know what you're talking about. Um, so again, very, very uh, important that we consider the things I've talked about uh, so far. For those of you who have been asking, uh, I at this point, I hold no formal linking to anyone. You know, when I use the term resistance, it's just, you know, this, a general term to resistance to Vatican II, resistance to uh, the New World Order, if you will, a resistance to self. Uh, you know, I'm not a formal math mouthpiece for Bishop Williamson or Boston, Kentucky, or Father Voigt, or even Father Kramer, for that matter. Uh, I will let you know when I disagree with uh, certain individuals, whether they're priests or website or this or that, and that's how it goes. I, I just uh, consider myself a Catholic who's trying to you know share my story, my testimony, and that's what I hope to get back to now. So, you know, essentially what occurred was when I was at a point when our Lord, uh, you know, our Lord and Lady had given me certain graces to go out and to work with other individuals at this point, um, you know, I, I knew and understood firmly that to reach out to those who were in the adult industry was going to be, I, I guess you can almost kind of say therapeutic to me, um, in a certain sense, but I also look at it as a, you know, my life's work, if you will. I kind of looked at every one of the saints and they're like, okay, they worked with this particular group, you know, whether it was orphans or, you know, people who were just sick or this or that. And I said, you know, this is, this is my story. You know, this is the, 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 my past. This is the path that I've now taken. Now I can make an impact, uh, in, in, in this industry or this world, however you want to say it. And so, you know, not only as a, a lifelong work, but then also just as a lifelong penance. Uh, for the things that I did, I, I always kind of look at it and view it in this sense, you know, the ultimate aim in all of this is conversion. But I, I, I realized that going into what I'm doing, that very few are going to listen, just even be open to dialogue and listening. Most of these girls are, are possessed by the way, they, they have unclean spirits. There's no question about it. Um, so in the very least, they're getting a warning concerning the path that I was on at one point. And I'm glad that people pointed that out to me. It was really irritating. I mean, I used to lash out like these girls would lash out at me. And so I see myself in them. I see just how inebriated they are in self in the darkness, which just literally covers their intellect and their heart and literally their whole souls. They are shackled down prisoners of self. And they can't, you, you know, you just can't stand to be proselytized at that point about turning back to Christ. And there's a different path. Uh, and again, that's generally speaking, that's not for every single girl. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that's why I can spend, you know, six to eight hours a day doing that particular uh, ministry. But I do realize that going into it, it's mostly a warning. Like, hey, listen, you, you can't be on that path objectively speaking, and be a friend of God. You know, our, our Lord said to uh, Mary, you know, go and do this, sin no more. So a lot of these girls have the notion that they can do what they're doing and be in God's grace and be God's closest friend. No, you cannot. That's the biggest delusional uh, lie. And unfortunately, we've got to preach the truth. And when I tell that to them, most of them think I'm harassing them or this or that. And the truth is very harassing to liberals and to those who, who, do, who don't want truth. And so we have to remember, as Catholics, we hold the truth and the true doctrines. Protestants do not. We rub Protestants the wrong way because when we give them those true doctrines, that, rub them, that rubs them the wrong way. Same, same difference. I mean, Protestants are, are spiritual adulterers in that sense. Not only spiritual adulterers, they've literally separated themselves from the true body of Christ. Um... And so that's why I continue to ask you to, to keep me in prayer. You know, I've been doing it, you know, even in the past few weeks here. And I've had, a, you know, a handful of girls, you know, to get through one or two conversations with. You know, I don't know. You know, you never know with any soul. And that's why we always have to pray for final perseverance. Um, but you just, you never know who's going to crack through the concrete, if you will, as a rose and, and ultimately break out. But, you know, our Lord went out 
and said that we've got to look for that one lost sheep. And so uh, I try to do the same uh, in my own work. It's very rewarding too. You know, I truly enjoy, you know, I spend most of my time, as you know, with, with non-Catholics. And that's why I go on all these non-Catholic radio shows and do this or that. <clears throat> and I honestly prefer to do that rather than even stay within the world of Catholicism and debate and do this or that. I honestly go out there and enjoy teaching the Catholic faith and sharing my story with others. It's, uh, you know, again, it's very rewarding to me. It's rewarding to see lives begin t to change, to at least attempt to make that change. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can't thank God enough. You know, I, I was at one point in my past always pursuing money. Like, I would do a job for money, and I never said, you know, I always said to myself, there's not one job out there that I would just do for nothing. I mean, who would, who would do a job for nothing? Uh, and now, I mean, literally that's, that's what I do. I mean, I literally just try to work for Jesus and for the church. We try to, uh, you know, obviously expose the apostasy in Vatican II, expose the new world order and prepare people for this transition to come with the tribulation period coming. And, um, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Oh, in terms of doing something for nothing. And, and I've never been more fulfilled uh, and more happy in my life than be, to just to be able to do what I'm doing uh, today. It's a great blessing and a great honor to work and serve Jesus. And that's kind of what I wanted to you know, invoke in you in this talk is to get passionate about whatever area <coughs> you know Jesus is calling you to. And there's truly no one area more important than the next and again kate to use the, the whole football example again but you know if an offensive lineman doesn't do his job the quarterback's going to get sacked so those who think it's just the quarterback's uh, position that's really important no it's not you know uh the running back even if he's going to come up and pick up the blitz then your quarterback's going to get sacked everyone's job is very important and so we all have to take our jobs very seriously our vocations and our first and foremost vocation is to uh, love God, uh, you know, to serve God, to go out there and present truth to a world which doesn't want truth anymore. We know it wants novelty. We know it wants this Novus Ordo religion. We know all religions want to come together. We know all this. So it's going to take some heroic virtue to go out there and not only take the heat for it and sit and have to listen to these people and liberals and modernists, but just sit there and smile about it. I mean, they can't affect your soul, folks. You know, and you're not going to add any time unto your uh, your own lifespan by worrying about what they have to say. And I mean, I don't lose any sleep over these people anymore. Uh, so please, if you're seeing you know rumors about me and this or that, just don't even bother engaging with it. Uh, as many of you know, I'm more than transparent. I tell you things that pr I probably shouldn't tell you. <laughs> on the air or most people wouldn't uh so just stay, stay clear of the drama and all the haters out there that's another message i wanted to get across uh but also if i can um you know kind of in closing i just want to reinforce that if you you know if you've got questions if you need an ear, so to speak, looking for a little, you know, direction for your own life, uh, interior way, wh whatever, you know, again, we can schedule time via Skype or phone. And I try to take time out. As you know, I'm, I'm pretty busy, but I feel this is very uh, important to stay in touch uh, with everyone. Um, you know, I have to do a better job myself to not be so crass and crude at times, to be so blunt um, and maybe on the surface level seems so uncompassionate towards others because I've been through an awful lot. I mean, I truly have been through uh, hell and back, and if it weren't for the support that I had around me, I think it would have been pretty difficult at first to try to turn my life around. So I realize how important that is, and if you get anything from this uh, hour-long talk we're about to close here, it was just remember, you know, sometimes the greatest works of mercy, you just sit there and listen uh, to someone, you know, put aside, you know, all these other things are very important too. you know, you know, visiting the, the elderly and the 
children who, who might be sick, but I mean, just sitting and listening to someone who might be going through someone, uh, going through something, uh, can literally turn a life around and you really don't even have to invoke, uh, the gospel, if you will. That's why when I'm kind of out and about, I always carry my rosary on the outside and my scapular on the outside. And I'd sometimes take a lot of heat from traditionals. You know what? I honestly don't want to hear it. You're just going to get the hand to your face. Uh, but this is another way of them. Uh, this is not being pharisaical. This is another way where I can communicate to someone who may be non-Catholic. Um, and if we're entering in some sort of dialogue to let them know, you know, you're, you're a man of character, a man of virtue. And just by sitting there listening to them, maybe you're offering some points and then they'll always kind of equate that to, okay, Hey, well, obviously this guy, you know, prays the rosary. He's, he seems devoted, you know, to our lady. I think most people know what a rosary is, so they would know that. And, uh, it would, it would, it's also a good conversational piece, even, you know, uh, kind of like a Catholic pickup line, if you will. I mean, obviously it's not a pickup line where we're trying to pick up uh, girls, but you understand what I mean. If we're trying to pick up conversions, you know, it's a good starting piece for me. Like, oh, hey, you know, if they don't know what it is, you know, what is that? You know, and you start talking about it, then we can start getting onto some of the topics that I talk about. Yeah, all these signs are here, the infiltration of the church, and we've got this Maitreya figure on the horizon. Uh, you'd, you'd be pretty surprised how interested uh, people will be into hearing more about just Catholicism uh, in general. And so, you know, God has given the platform here with this apostle this is his this is not mine folks so i always on a daily basis have to see you know what direction he wants to take and today upon cancellation uh, of my talk rather than get into another area of you know prophecy or this specific theological piece i just wanted to relay a little bit more about my own testimony and story so you can get a a better grip <coughs> excuse me as to why i do some of the things I do, the passion that I have, you know, for working uh, with those who trapped, you know, in sins of impurity, especially with some of these escorts and prostitutes, far more dangerous uh, is the vanity that's associated behind it. So I, I try my best to help them realize that they are literally shackled uh, by the chains of self and they're putting all of these other things on display. I can't tell you how many times, you know, these girls will respond back and say, you know, I, you know, I make, uh, 50,000 a week. Uh, you know, listen, I, I've talked to, you know, one-on-one -on -one with girls in, in, in Maxim magazine, Playboy Max magazine, hardcore pornographic actresses. Just the other day, I was talking to another girl over in Europe, some, yeah, I don't know what kind of model. She was a very, very popular model, but I mean, just completely lewd crude and rude and i mean i i gave her a very strong message and like she really didn't whiplash back i mean she understood what i was saying and i said hey listen if you ever want to talk about not only you know a change for your life but just about what's about to happen in the world you know here's here's my uh you know email here's my skype and let's get at it you know let's start talking a little bit about it so you know everyone's got to start somewhere and that's where you know, you, you kind of have to, within the first five minutes, gauge where, where someone's at. I mean, not only intellectually, you know, theologically, kind of where they're at spiritually, if you will. I mean, you know, let's not kid ourselves. We are making objective judgments all the time about some, you know, about others. And, uh, you know, to be able to get wh wherever whatever level they're on, right? Because some of us are uh, more stu uh, intellectually uh, some are more advanced in the, you know, the theological area. And I've always said, and I said this recently on, uh, a radio show that I was on, and I think it was on leak project, you know, a wise man keeps wiser men around them. So that's why I bring on special guests and on non dogmatic issues. I'm always trying to pick their brain to see what they're studying and they're analyzing. Uh, because just because they're Protestant doesn't mean that they wouldn't be right in a certain areas. That's, you know, non theological in nature. So, you know, listen, if you're trying to grow in holiness, we have the lives of the saints. We obviously have our, our, our Lord, Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, you know, theologically wise for this uh, crisis, you know, I would simply point to Archbishop Lefebvre, Father Hess, former uh, Father Gomer de Paul. You got Monsignor Perez. You got Father Kramer. Uh, those would be, you know, five right there for me. You know, kind of a, a light in the darkness, so to speak, to provide some clarity. Um. And so if I can be any uh, service to you all, uh, I certainly 
would love to do that. But, you know, in the end, this apostolate is Christ. This is his. He'll, you know, when it's time to move along to, to something else, we'll move along. And I know that day will come when we'll have to transition. And, you know, the persecution is really uh, laying down heavy. And so, so my good friends, I appreciate you all uh, for tuning in. If you had any follow-up questions as to, uh, you know, more about, you know, my background, I think I pretty much uh, covered it all. You know, I guess I can say kind of in general right now, I currently live in the Ohio Valley, kind of like an urban uh, hermit, kind of a contemplative in action. Uh, I, I guess one of the, the, the skills and one of the gifts that our Lord has given me is to be able to multitask as much as I do. You know, at one point when I was going through grad school and dating and doing this or that, I mean, they, they were literally 20 hour days. And so it's really kind of similar now. <clears throat> and I know that I got to do a better job of, of getting rest sometimes because uh, that ultimately affects my health. But the bottom line is, is this is not a website that has, you know, a half a dozen or a dozen people behind it where they each kind of have their own function. I literally have to do everything. Uh, and you know what I mean by that, obviously, through grace, our Lord is doing it. But it's just this is the way I kind of wanted to keep it. Uh, I was actually given some prudent spiritual advice uh, some years ago to kind of keep it more or less down this road because of all the argumentation and all the splitting and you know, fractioning, and that's basically what happened with defeat modernism is, you know, Chris didn't want to move in the direction that uh, I knew that our Lord needed to take for, for, for my work and what I was trying to accomplish, and so I broke with him. So I tried to keep the ball in my court, uh, so to speak, and not really try to bring in anyone from the outside uh, with the occasion of some who are helping. And by the way, I do have some. The Darji family uh, is helping me, uh, Robert. Uh, with before it's news, you know, getting some information out there for me. So if you can help me in that sense, uh, to where you can help me, you know, get information presented on some other uh, social media and alternative news outlets, that's really where I, I need help in, is more of the, the external realm, if you will. Um, so all in all, uh, you know, I'm dedicated to Our Lady and Lord. Uh, whatever we can do, it's got to be, everything has to be, left on the field so to speak folks this this our religion is all or nothing this is not you know sitting on the sidelines if you will we got to get in the fight we got to mix it up yeah at times we're gonna have to admonish priests we're gonna have to admonish bishops and if they don't want to hear the truth which a large number of them don't that's where god comes into play god is god is going to take this into his own hands and demonstrate to the world and that's why a lot of these bishops and priests they don't like me here they don't like to hear me say that because they know deep down that that's what's about to happen. They hear me echo it. And they, they think that I shouldn't be saying that. And that's not going to stop. Okay, My voice is only going to get louder and louder as we're getting closer and closer to a direct connection between God's anger, between Vatican II, between, between you know, for those who are following uh, this new false religion. And granted, there's a lot of ignorant people. Okay, but the bottom line is, is you have to possess your own soul. You have to know the faith. You don't just go and, and rely upon what your bishop says. You can't do that at this time. The bishops, for all intents and purposes, the majority of them have lost the faith. They've lost their minds, literally. And we have to continue to pray for their conversion. That is key, folks. We're in a situation now where it's not Catholics making mistakes. They're literally following another religion. They're in the cult of man, as Paul VI called it. This is not our cult. The cult of God is our cult. So if you think you can you know, go along and stay in those mainstream churches, which may look all nice and fancy and have relics and have the smells and bells, and yet they get up there and teach Vatican II, and you think this pleases God, you are dead wrong. Those buildings do not please God, just as the Greek and Russian, Russian Orthodox churches, which are heretical and schismatic at this point, do not please God. And their masses are off limits. Same situation now, folks. We are in the universal apostasy, which the early apostles warned about, tradition warned about. We're literally just years away from Rome, uh, going full swing back to ancient paganism through environmentalism. Uh, you know, Agenda 2030 gives you kind of an indication of, of, of a time frame, even. Uh, a Blessed Virgin Mary has been warning for quite some time, and if you stay close to her, she'll make it very clear to you. And that's what I'm finding with some of the message I've been getting over the past few weeks. 
you know, by praying the rosary, things are becoming more clear on a daily basis. And I'd advocate you getting to tradcatnight.blogspot.com on a daily basis. There's a blog archive on that right-hand side, folks, which has over 7,000 blogs. You can also simply go to Google, type in Tradcat Night in whatever subject you're trying to search. Type in that subject word after Tradcat Night and you'll get the top 10 articles. You know, spend time, learn, um, and, and pray. Pray is the most important thing. And so, my good friends, we will close uh, with that for today. Again, make sure you're, you're subscribed to Tradcat Night. Make sure you hit the notification button. Uh, you know, I could talk more and more about my uh, story a little bit. Uh, I truly don't like talking about myself, but I, I know many of you have have wondered, you know, where your bio page is, you know, who you are, and I think at least this could be used as a reference point so that I don't have to keep constantly repeating myself when people ask me, okay, like, who are you, where you're coming from, you know, what are some of your positions? All I have to do is now link this this video and send it to them and they can take the time out. And, and, and as a side note too, folks, I know many of you will leave about, you know, like 10 questions behind and you're looking for like paragraph answers from me. I, I had this and I had to kind of admonish someone the other day for this. And I don't have that kind of time as much as you may think that I could sit down and do that with every email. That's not, that's not possible. Um, and one individual got pretty upset that I only gave them, you know, one line or two as a response and kind of just made a, a reference and they said well you know if I had time I would have did that well folks listen if you don't have time then don't even message me I mean if, it, if it's not important for you enough for your salvation to get to some of the information that we present then don't even bother messaging me and I say that in charity I mean that doesn't make any sense that you want to try to arrive you know at at the position that we have and, and want you know a one or two sentence answer and you you know you don't have time to look at it well then Okay, there's going to be an awful lot of souls in hell who say that. You know, God may, will, will say that, you're judge. I don't have time. Okay, so let's take our salvation more seriously. Uh, if I can be any of assistance, especially those, uh, you know, struggling with uh, sins of impurity, you know, maybe some tactics. Uh, I've even done some videos on this in the past in terms of, uh, you know, breaking free. It is a battle, folks. It is a battle, and uh, it is possible. You know, when God, when when the devil wants to kind of whisper in your ear, it's not possible for you to break free of this sin. Yes, it is possible, and I'm walking example of it. I ask you to continue to pray for me that I persevere, and to stay faithful. And that's it. The bottom line: stay faithful to Christ, know the Catholic faith, uh, avoid mortal sin, um, and continue continue to help. Uh, your neighbor works of mercy love works until next time my good friends stay safe and god bless ave maria